thought I'd show you how to how I skin beaver without leg holes. This one's a little drier. Maybe we'll do this one first. And uh, well, that one kind of dries out. And it's kind of a novelty. I'm sure all you people that look at this video know how to skin beavers, so that's no big deal. But I'm going to show you a little bit different twist here. And I skin them with without leg holes and I stretch them without leg holes and it's kind of a novelty but I've been doing that for the last 30 years and I still like to do it that way because it's a little bit easier for me to do and uh, it's pretty easy to skin them the trick is really in stretching them this is kind of a, a knife I use strictly for this it's my tail knife and what I do I take a long knife like this a fillet knife I blunt up the end of it, real blunt right there, and this is sharp here. So now I run it down through a tail or through a beaver belly, it doesn't cut in. And this place cuts, this, but this is real blunt here. Kind of my own little invention. And you don't open the guts up too often. Now unlike the, the commercial way, you start right here after you get your main cut made. You pull these legs out straight, cut right in there, go right straight across. Do the same way this way. You cut these legs right out of here entirely. Now, this is very, very important. Never cut back up to the tail. Always stretch these two feet out, cut straight across. You T cut it right straight across the casters. This is very, very important. Otherwise, you won't be able to stretch this properly. This comes right across here like this. Now, the advantage of this is a little bit faster to skin your beaver. Because you don't have to go around the leg holes. You don't have to cut any legs off. You don't have to cut any tails off. Which uh, anybody that's handled many beaver carcasses know that if you got somebody skinning for you, cuts off the tails and the legs, make it a little easier to skin them. You won't usually end up having to use a pole put to load them on a pickup truck along. And that's real bad along about May. You're cleaning all these carcasses out because they haven't got a, a leg or a tail or something to pick them up with. And doing it this way, you don't have to worry about that. That's just a butt right there. Doesn't matter there. If you're going close skin, make sure you can close skin. If you can't, rough skin them because if you try to close skin them, you can't get under them with a flesh and knife, and you spend a lot more time. You never get as good a looking job. Okay, now I'll flip this over this way. And I don't dare horse this beaver. Like I say, he's a small beaver, and if I really get on him and pull him like I would a larger beaver. I'm going to rip the guts out of him. Then we got a heck of a mess and I don't really need to do that. We're not really in a hurry with this. You know, when we take a lot of our small beaver, anything I figure won't make a medium, we usually skin them out without leg holes and home tan them and put them on hoops just like we do with these up here. Now these are for wall decorations. These are beaver that won't make it. There's a one on the left that'll probably barely make medium but he's a damaged beaver. So you're talking a four or five dollar beaver, you know, and we can hoop them like that and get a little more money selling them a rendezvous or something. Put that over here, get it flushed out. You fellows out there uh, that don't know how to get these casters out, I'll show you how we take them out. You got the casters and the oil sacks, and always be sure you separate the casters and the oil sacks. Never leave them together. And these aren't much in the way of casters here. They certainly aren't much in the way of oil sacks. But this is a oil sack. Boy, that's a little fella right there. I'm gonna leave him over there like that. And try to clean these sack or these uh, casters and oil sacks up when you take them off. Don't leave any more meat on them. You absolutely have to. Got your casters. And. Using your oil sack. Oop, we kind of cut that oil sack there a little bit. These we put all in the bait anyway, so it really don't matter. There's a little bit of meat on them. And we don't even buy, bother to dry the oil sack. We just throw them in there with a little salt when we go. They go in with a little bunch of get ground up in there. And I do most all my fleshing with the coon and everything else. I usually start from the middle and work out. And to me, that works a little bit better for me. And you can't really bull on these small beaver because if you do, you'll tear them. It's not desirable. I sharpen the first inch here, inch and a quarter, 
this is pretty sharp on both ends and this is what I shave with if I get in where it's tough I go across here to start it you can see the middle part is fairly dull this is what I use to push off but I shave with the corners with all when we're done flashing here we got a beaver that looks something like this I see it kind of drops down there now I'm going to show you the secret and the secret is in stretching them so pay attention to what I tell you it's very very important first of all split this nose split it back in there right to the nose this will gain you another inch on your pelt regardless of the size of the beaver right gain you another inch that little simple thing right there now we split that nose down to there your first two nails go right there now pay attention because it's going to make your break take this little ear bring it right out there stick it right out there like that forget about stretching them down or out or any other place stretch them just the way I'm showing you no other way look at that wants to go back out look at that stupid silly cat this came in cat then we go down here and we bring this one over here Here. Then we go down here and we go just below this little ear. Bring her out there where you want her. Don't overdo it. Just stretch that beaver to where the beaver wants to stretch. Don't force it. Don't force the beaver. Never force the beaver. Forget the bottom. Let this go. This is the last part you stretch down here. Now when we start doing this, we bring them down here where the last leg holds are. This is where we start gaining. And when you get all done, you're going to gain at least an inch on one of these beavers. I don't care if it's a small beaver uh, or a blanket. You're going to gain one, at least one inch on a beaver. Okay, now we got something like this. Take this sucker right here, this little tail. Bring it right down here. Pull it right down. Now, if you didn't get it clean enough when you were fleshing on the beaver, on the beam, now you can. Take this lip. Start back in here and take that lip right off. Take it right off. You don't want that. That's the last place a beaver will dry. And when he dries there, he'll pull your, you'll lose at least an inch on your pelt. That and yours are the last place to dry. So take that sucker right off there. Get rid of that lip. In the old days, we used to stretch them perfectly round. That's the way they wanted them. And you never, a beaver isn't round. He's, he's oval. And when you pull him out to make him perfectly round, what you do is you thin him in here. You thin the pelt. So... What you want is a Canadian stretch, almost kind of a squarish stretch. That's the ideal stretch for any beaver. Right here is what you try to bring out. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about the top. It's the quarters you want to bring out. You want to get this shape on these quarters to bring them out. We've got a full measurement. Because actually when a beaver's stretched right, it doesn't matter where you're measuring from. He's going to come out with the same measurement. No matter, no matter where you measure them crossways or cross holes, where the leg holes are, or up or down or across. If he's shaped right, you'll come out with the same measurement. fur I'm catching off I'm cutting off from it. I got a smaller beaver trust me I've gained an inch on that beaver that's the way I stretch him guarantee you don't believe it put the twenty dollar bill on the deal and we'll let you skin him out and stretch him any way you want when the leg holes in him and after you're done we'll draw a circle on him I'll pull him off and restretch and I'll gain an inch on you absolutely guaranteed all our beaver up here look that way. I mean, this is hard trap country. And uh, trappers take all their legs off and they ain't got none left. So we have to skin them, this, skin them and stretch them this way. I mean, this is hard trap country. You see a beaver without leg holes, you know, there's a lot of competition there. 
North American Trapper Predation Packages. Get any one of our specific trapping packages that has been ultimately designed to help you become the master predation controller of your farm, ranch, or hunting lease. Control the predators that are costing you time and money and get out there trapping today with one of our North American Trapper Predation Boxes. All of the packages come with the trapping essentials to get you out in the field, plus an instructional DVD that will show you the way. Visit us at NorthAmericanTrapper.com and start breaking dirt today.